Welcome back to the show. Well, in the lead up to the 2016 elections, it was not uncommon to hear chiefs endorsing presidential candidates. And one chief who came under huge public criticism was Dr. Mahile Osiadieyo Ajimabedu II. Receiving the then President John Mahama, the chief promised to abdicate if anyone defeated him in a debate on the achievement of President Mahama. In fact, he even said he would turn into a serial caller if he did not win that debate. But when Anna Bedou met uh, the second met President Kufado last week, he presented a theory for his previous actions. First, let's take a listen to the Domahine as he extolled President Mahama's achievement. <laughs> The work you are doing here, I didn't see Kwame Nkrumah, but from 1979 to date, no one can say he has worked more than Anyone who disagrees, I will turn into a serial caller. And if that person defeats me in such a debate, I will abdicate. If I say I'm happy, then I'm telling lies. I'm very sad. I've never seen such development on this land. Ghanaians like the way you do your things. Your things are big and very nice. The, well, that's the Domahine there. Uh, well, he's explained to President Kufado the chiefs have no choice than to speak of the good deeds of candidates when they visit. He added also that he left out some negatives like corruption and kalamse. Politics is one thing once you engage in. You can have a chief supporting a faction with a linguist supporting another. Sometimes it leads to division. Even myself, I was accused of belonging to a particular faction, that of your younger brother who has left office. It's all good. You cannot look at a prominent person in the face and say something against him. When you say something against him, you cannot say something against him. If it is Dr. you cannot say something against him. you cannot say something against him. In the same way, your younger brother who has left also came. I can't say something against him. As a Bacochi, baby, Cacrebi, never they caught to internet issue. Naja, Barbarian, the end of Ioma. If each person is speaking about his achievement, you have to say something good about a person. They took a small part of it and put it on the internet. They really insulted me. Ninina, I say, when your younger brother came, I spoke about his friend. I did not talk about money, corruption, and galamse. I only spoke about infrastructure. Manka corruption, manka galamse, nianka hai infrastructure. Domahine Osiadeo Ajmai Bedu there. Call it uh, an about 10 if you like, but uh, the issue really is how difficult is it for chiefs to navigate the space between politics, development, and communal interest, as well as the chieftaincy institution, as it were. In the studio with me is Nanan Sakwao IV. He is chief of uh, Akwemu Edumasa. Nana, you're welcome. You're welcome. What are your you. initial comments? Well, I'd say that uh, we have chiefs have to stay out of politics. Politics is a very, very temporal job. Chieftaincy is a permanent job, and you shouldn't mix it. Because otherwise, when the temporary job ends, mm. your permanent job may end. You think he mixing, he's mix, mixing anything here because he's actually explaining that 
if someone comes to you as a chief, as a political leader, you can't say bad things about them. I mean, you, sh you just have to go on and on about the good things because if they present to you evidence that they have done good, then you need to commend them. That makes sense. Well, I, th I think it's a personal choice as to whether a chief would want to, uh, to how much you want to go ahead and maybe praise someone. Mm -hmm. uh, but m maybe others would also choose to be a bit more reserved uh, with how much you praise the others, because in any way, uh, you know, politics is a very funny. It's a very fun. It's like you employing somebody, you mm. know. So, after you've employed that person, you know, why, why do you glorify them so much? You're going to pay them to come and do the job. And as a chief, what we should demand is accountability, regardless of whoever wins the job. If indeed there's galamse in your vicinity, or your roads are bad, or your schools are in a bad shape. Whoever wins it should come and fix it. Okay. And I think we are very we are in that privileged position. No, no, that sounds like the very I, 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 it sounds like an idealistic position. But we know the reality. We know that chiefs come under a lot of pressure because of the uh, respect they command from the subject, so to speak. What's what's your own experience? Well, I, you see, I don't know whether maybe because I'm in the media, and maybe because I am more vociferous, uh, maybe they don't trust me. So okay. I haven't been tempted or haven't been made any offer. And indeed, I'm very aggressive to both parties as to whatever it is that has to come to my people. And I lobby a lot. You know, I go behind the scenes and I lobby for things for my, mm. my people. And I think most chiefs have got that privilege. However, you know, uh, the, all the hands are not equal. Some may be hungry and would follow their stomach rather than go with the integrity. But I, I think with the integrity that's bestowed on chiefs, mm. if we were to sit back and play the role as chiefs and demand, because indeed, whoever comes, whether it's the DC or the MP, before they come onto your land, you know, they have to give you that respect. So let's just keep it and use it for the benefit of our people. And mm. I really urge chiefs to be chiefs and let politicians be politicians. Mm. So you'd reckon that being meddling in politics as a chief r reduces the respect, perhaps? A lot. I mean, you see, and I make this example that, you see, for one reason or the other, we are very, very, we lean towards more our tribes than we lean towards the nation. We have not been able to put the nation where you know, people feel very connected to Ghana. So people more connected to whether they are Chim, Chief, Ashanti, yeah. Fanti, they have more connections there. The command that the average citizen would obey from their chief, they won't even obey from the president unless the president brings soldiers to come and back mm -hmm. that command. Mm -hmm. So if we have all this, uh, you know, honor, then why do we want to leave it all and then go and follow you know, uh, politicians. Look at us and he says, look, my mother's, you know, passed. I'm going to do a burial and therefore I'm just asking that from tomorrow everybody stays home. Not even uh, one guard dog to police the town. Everybody gave him that respect that one. Mm. If you want one night for your mom, we'll give you one night. I mean, if, if it had been a politician, they would have to bring the whole army to come and make sure that people obey that instruction. So if you have that command, mm. why are you leaving it? you know, to go and meddle into politics. That's what we have to realize what we have and, you know, really blow up what we have and protect it and preserve mm. it. But looking at what we have on our hand, the situation we have on our hand, where chiefs have come out to say, so for instance, the Domahine mm. comes out to say very nice things about the, pre the, the, the uh, then president, mm -hmm. who then loses, and now he comes here and he's obviously going to say nice things about the, pres mm -hmm. the current president, but then he explains his further action, uh, his previous actions, mm -hmm. that's, that, that sort of paints the picture that it is very difficult. It's not as easy as you make it sound right now that you're speaking to navigate that space, you know, between the politician, between your people, and, uh, you know, what you, you, what you, you require of the state to develop as a, as a town or as a village. You see, uh, it's, it's not, uh, diplomatically, it's not right to... Uh, advise an adult in public okay. traditionally you don't advise an adult in public so if somebody has come and obviously somebody who is running for political office is deemed as an adult or a community elder mm. yeah you can throw a little air of caution and give them your blessing okay. that you know with this 
uh, journey that you are embarking on, mm. we'll give you all the blessings and we'll ask God to, you know, mm. give you all the luck. If the next person comes, you wish the same blessings from God to them to go. But as soon as you start singling out, you did this and you did that and you went here and you went here, uh, it, it becomes, becomes problematic. Yeah, it becomes problematic. And then you, you may have to kind of reverse on what you said and say, oh, I said this because of this and that. And with your position, you know, I mean, the domain is a big boy. In mm. terms of chieftains, he is my senior, 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 senior. Okay. No way. So, you know, I cannot even put Attempts my... Attempts to no, advise no, 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 no way. You know, it's not allowed. Okay. It's not allowed. So if you can see, I'm completely talk, saying my own thing and leaving the domain on his own. Because he's a big chief. And that's how... That's the reverence in chieftaincy. Okay. I dare not tell him off. Mm. I dare not tell him off. Had he been a DC or something, I would have ripped him to shreds. <laughs> but, I, but I cannot. Okay, so so, so you see, once this honor has been given you, you have to guard it. Mm. You have to guard you it. You have to guard it. You have to I, protect I, it. In this case, let's forget about the Domahine because mm. I, I see the difficulty you have mm. in addressing him uh, mm. because of traditional mm. values, etc. But if you're looking at a general situation, how then does do actions like these affect the relationship between the chief and the people? It does a lot. You see, you, you open the radio stations and listen to news and everything, and anybody at all can pick up a phone, ring into a radio station, mention a DC, an MP, a minister, and rip them to shreds. Anybody, any Jack Russell can do that. Look, if, if a chief did the same thing that, that DC did, that somebody was insulting him, mm. the language is different. Mm. Ah, this chief did not step well, did not tread with cash. You know, we, we, we have that reverence for our chiefs mm. that you can't just call a chief and insult them. So once you are in that office or you have that privilege, you, you don't want to go and mingle with Because as soon as you cross into the political lines, anybody will start insulting you. Okay. Yeah, anybody at all start insulting And to you. protect the chieftaincy institution, you think that this is, uh, that is when chiefs should begin to recognize the reverence and... It's, politics is a no-go area for us. It's a no-go area. It's but we know partis that... Partis partisan politics. Mm. Well, I mean, of course we have to do politics. I mean, I lobbied for my road, fought with the DC, this, this. that's politics, you know, but... Partisan politics as to, well, this party is better, that party is better, and coming up openly and jumping up and down, that's, that's, that's tricky. Mm. But politics, yes, chiefs should be very much involved in politics because education, your roads, your everything. You need the politicians. <laughs> but yeah, many politics. have said that it's, it's easy for people to come on radio to say you, you should stay away from politics. But behind the scenes, there are people who do not show forth that they are uh, partisan, uh, they are political, uh, they are partisan political animals, mm -hmm. if you like. But then behind the scenes, they do so many things that are that contradict. Isn't that hypocrisy? No, it's not hypocrisy because it's like being a pastor in a church or, uh, you know, a teacher in a classroom and you, you know, prefer the boys to the girls. You don't come to the class and say, hey, you know, I prefer boys to girls. But in your head, everybody votes, every chief votes. So you have something. But bear in mind that the people who you are governing or ruling are also very diverse. Okay. And they would have to come to you for reasons A or reasons B. And at every given time, whatever mm. you say should be gospel and they have to take it. If it comes to a point where they think, ah, you know, radio, MPP needs is hard on the car. You, you put yourself in a very tricky position. So, well, in your bedroom, whatever politics you do, who cares? But once you come out in the open, you have to present yourself as neutral as possible, even mm. though it's very difficult in Ghana. All right. Very, very difficult in Ghana. And I give you an example. Uh, Akosombo to Ajina, Dumasa, Jekiti Road was absolutely horrible. So I go to the DC to try and get it done. You know, and it becomes a big tussle between the DC and myself. And so then I'm MPP because I'm fighting the DC for the road. I bypass him and I go and see Inisa Fuseni. Who the, minister for the minister for Rosen Highways then. He sees the road and thinks this is terrible. So he does everything need to put a contractor on the road then mm, if Inusa has done it then he must be NDC you know, so it's like at every given time whatever action you take we have to find a hole to put you in so can you imagine coming up openly to then say look I am for A or I'm yeah. for B it's wrong and it's it reduces the level of confidence that perhaps the people have in you and the respect which and bear in mind you see one thing again gift is that uh, there's so much 
respect that I get today, which is not mine, is for the office I hold. Okay. Uh, it wasn't given to me by birth. Right. By virtue of the office, I've, I've, I've gained that respect. I cannot use that respect mm. that somebody is giving me to say, well, in that case, I'm going to go and support A or I'm going to go and support B. It's not yours. Okay. It's, it's an honor that you've, you've inherited. Okay. And so you leave it intact and go. Okay. Yeah. Your final words as to how we can deal with it as, as a nation. And, I mean, you've spoken about how the chiefs do themselves a lot of good if they stay away of politics. But mm -hmm. how can we deal with this as a nation? Because it's a problem that we have. That will be your final word. Well, uh, it boils down to the chieftaincy, and I say that, you know, uh, every chief should know that what they deserve is a polystyrene cup. The China, you know, the bone China cup we are drinking from now is because of the office we hold. But indeed, what we all deserve is a polystyrene cup. So if somebody is now giving you a, you know, a bone China cup to drink from, you don't take it away from the room and go and start showing off. It's not yours so much of the respect the reasons why the politician went to you know this chief a or chief b wasn't because he's kweku sintimisa it's because he's nana and sakwa mm. if he had come to me as kweku sintimisa that's fine that's my birthright i can decide to do what i want but if it's come to you as nana and sakwa which is you're not doing you, so on behalf of the people on behalf of the people it's the stool that's giving you that honor you leave it intact you don't take it and go and follow whoever you think you want to follow. Okay, thank you so much for passing thank through. You, thank uh, you too. I've been educated about chieftaincy <laughs> some way, somehow. We hope that we can deal with it in a better way as a nation. <laughs> Nana Ansakwao, the fourth, is chief of Akwemu Edumasa. They're talking about how to navigate the space between politics, chieftaincy, communal uh, interest, and of course, development. Let's move on from chieftaincy now. The National Malaria Control Program is blaming the spread of the disease on the misuse of mosquito net. Now, the program has revealed that many people in the city prefer to use the insecticide-treated net for covering their dustbins and fencing their gardens instead of using it to protect themselves. The comment comes as the world marks Malaria Day today. In an interview with Beatrice Edu, the officer in charge of monitoring and evaluation at the National Malaria Control Program, Samuel Opon, asked those engaged in that practice to stop. One of the areas is the use of these preventive measures. One is the ITNs, the insecticide treated nets. And day in and day out, what we find out is the misuse of nets. Um, people are using it for other means rather than sleeping under them. Um, a point in case is uh, people using it to fence their gardens, people using it to cover rubbish bins, um, these tricycles which carry rubbish. These are what we have seen instead of using them. And so one of the advocacy tools we are using is to really employ on people. It's mo mostly behavior change communication that we are using to really impress upon people that if you will not use the net, if you don't have need for the net, give it to another person who needs it. Because these are nets bought by donors, partners. And when they see their money being misused for that matter, um, it becomes a problem for them. Is it that there's not been enough education to tell people how important the nets are and the fact that it can actually prevent them from contracting malaria? I think that is not the case. There's been extensive um, media um, campaigns during net distribution. So for, for health facilities, every day is one of the things they talk about. Whenever we are doing mass distributions, there is an extensive social mobilization activity we employ on. It's just that people have now found the net to be useful for other things rather than for sleeping under. So uh, it's, it's, it's just the priorities of people have changed. They need to find their gardens. They find the, the nets much handy. Than, but really, we are all here saying that the nets are not for that purpose. So would you say that it is as a result of this practice that you're seeing a lot more cases? OK, so um, the malaria cycle involves three things, the human, the parasites, which is the plasmodium, and then the anopheles, which is the mosquito. So if one of these is not there, then there is no. So what we are doing that the net really helps to bring down the mosquito population. So if people are not being found sleeping in the net, definitely then the mosquito finds people available to, to, to bite them, yes. We have distribution channels, but we know that there we still have deficits. And that is why we say, because what we do is that for mass campaign, we use two is to one strategy. 
So you find out that 50% of the population might not get a net. Um, health facilities, we only give it to pregnant women and children under five. And so it means that if you don't have a child under five in your household, you may not get a net. If you don't have a pregnant woman, you may not get, have the net. In schools, we give it to only P2, P6 children or peoples. If you don't have a child in this category, you may not have. So if you are, might not be covered in all this, but there might be a household which have more because he has all these categories of people. And so what we are saying is that once you have enough, more than enough, give it to the household which doesn't have. And so if we don't have that community effect, if you don't have 80% of the population being covered by net, then definitely the, the chain or cycle of transmission will not be broken. What is the current uh, prevalence rate? So when you talk about prevalence, we have a um, prevalence rate currently of 20.4%. And that we use children under five as a proxy. Yes. And, but uh, if you talk about suspected cases which are being reported in hospitals, we have about 10.4 million suspected cases. And Annually or monthly? Annually. For the whole year 2016, we reported 10.4 million cases. And these are cases from health facilities. And it translates to around 28,000 cases per day being reported in our public health facilities. And so the burden in terms of sus suspected cases is high. But we also should understand that these suspected cases, not all of them are confirmed. Some may be other conditions. But, uh, and that's why we are promoting testing before treating so that at least before you confirm a case or before you can treat a case as malaria, it should have been confirmed. In cases where you found a lot of people using, misusing the nets, um, where do you usually find them? Are they in the cities or in the rural areas? I mean, when you talk about these covering of rubbish bins, it's just around Accra. <laughs> if you talk about the fencing, then it's, it's widespread, mostly in the farming areas. But then, surprisingly, in the rural areas, people are really using the net. And so from the large DHS, rural areas or rural settlers use net more than the urban cities. Moving forward, uh, what is the Malaria Control Program doing to encourage people to use it or not to take the net at all if they think uh, they don't want to use it? Um, I mean, as a program, we, we advise that since the net is an effective tool, everybody, at least a household, one household, should have a net.